I've had the worst weekend. And I'm over it. And tomorrow, Monday, and I gotta go start this bullshit all over again. <clears throat> but anyway, you know, I need no intro. So basically, <clears throat> the other day I was watching um, Tammy Roman Uncensored. So if you haven't watched it, you should watch it because um, she was saying a lot of a lot of shit that um, I think people need to hear. I think women need to hear it and um, men need to hear it as well. So one thing she said that stood out to me was um, she talked about how she was molested as a child <clears throat> and then later on, you know, raped as an adult. And um, it stood out to me because it was a similar situation for myself. I was molested as a child starting from the age of four um, all the way up to the age of nine. And then um, in my 20s, since I just made 30, I got to say in my 20s, I was uh, raped by a friend or someone who I thought was a friend. But anyway... Um, you know, she told the story about the mol the molestation, but then she told a story about when she was raping, basically her and her friend was at a gas station and the man kind of came up there, you know, with a gun, stole their jewelry, held them at gunpoint, basically kidnapped them, took them to a warehouse and raped her and the best friend repeatedly for four days before letting them go. Now, the thing that... um how, how I'm gonna put it the thing that always gets me when a person hears a story like that people like to jump in and chime in and say oh my god how did you let that happen or oh you know why you didn't do this why y'all didn't you know fight I've heard people say things like that now she didn't say anybody told her that but I'm pretty sure people probably did because people are stupid like that the thing about it is this you don't know what a person gonna do what you're gonna do when a person holding a gun to your face Unless you get guns pointed in your face on a regular basis, I don't think nobody got the market corner on a gun in your face. So most people freeze, you know what I'm saying? You know, it, it's just like a it's a it's a non-reactive reaction to danger. You know what I'm saying? And ha if she would have maybe done something and he could have killed the girl, he could have killed her, the you know, he the girl could have done something, he could have killed Tammy, he could have killed them both. So you know, in that situation, both women did what they had to do in order to survive. And that is not an easy thing to do. And um, when asked the question, how could she endure? You know, how was she able to endure something so horrible? She said she had already been through it. And when she said that, it was just like, oh, my God. Like, I know exactly what you're talking about. Because I've, I've said before... That when you experience trauma in a, a adolescent stage of life and a developmental stage of life, you build a tolerance for it. Not saying that you handle it well, not saying that it doesn't affect you later in life, but it's just the shock value of an experience is no longer there. If you've already been violated, if somebody violates you again, it's not, it's not shocking. It's just, it turns into you two, like, this happening to me again? You know what I'm saying? The first time is shocking and it's appalling and you're like, oh my God, and you know, whatever, whatever. Second time, third time, fourth time. Especially, you know, like I said, when you're you're molested and you got to get up and see the next the person the next day. And you can't wear it on your face. You can't show it in your eyes because this person is basically in control of your life and your livelihood. So you a prisoner. You a prisoner of your own mind. You a prisoner in your own body. And somebody is taking complete control of that and in turn taking complete control of everything. You know what I'm saying? I was told that nobody was going to believe me. I was told that if I was to say anything that 
you know, I'm going to ruin my family. You know, everybody's going to hate me. This is what the, this is what this person was telling to a for you for, you know, a child, an adolescent, you know? So what do you do in that situation? Even though I'm being hurt and I'm being violated and I want this thing to stop. This person is telling me that if I say anything, then I'm going to ruin stuff for other people. What do you do with that? What do you do with that? As a child, I, I've dealt with that as an adult where somebody threatens to do something to someone else and I got to endure certain shit so that nothing happens to somebody else. So what do you what do you do with that? You just you just learn to, to tolerate it the, to the best of your ability. And I remember growing up, I would cry at the drop of a hat. I would cry at the drop of a hat. It was to the point where I couldn't control it. It was to the point where I couldn't control it. You know, I first, I remember being suicidal when I was young, starting like real, real young and thinking about that and not wanting to be here. And it, you know, people would tell me stuff and it would hurt me so bad and I would cry and I would be so upset. And they'll be looking at me like, why is she so sensitive? Why is she take everything like that? And it was like, it didn't have nothing to do with what they said. It had to do with the fact that I'm already going through something. I'm already constantly, constantly, constantly being I'm already constantly being hurt. So when somebody else would do something, it just felt I, I couldn't take no more. I I didn't have it to take because I already had to take what was happening to me and to and to um endure it. Okay. I already had to endure it. So it's like anything else that happened after that would hurt so bad because I just didn't want nobody else to do nothing to me. And the only way I could describe at that time was basically like being in a room with a bunch of people and they got headphones in and the music turned all the way up and they got blindfolds on and you screaming, help me, help me, help me, and nobody's coming. What happened to me you know, nobody was around at the time when it was actually going on. So, I never got to feel rescued. I never got to feel like somebody is coming to save me. I don't, I never got to feel like, I never got to feel that. At that time, you know, so it's like, you start to get put it put in your mind that nobody coming for me. Nobody's coming to help me. Or whatever. Even the situation, you know, with being raped, it was like <laughs> the person was bigger than me. I was pent. And <clears throat> I couldn't um couldn't do nothing. And even afterwards it was like I, I just didn't, I just, I just didn't say nothing. I just was like, what you, what you say? Like, there was no tears. There was no tears. Not at that moment. I cried, I think. I cried about that situation two years after it happened. Almost two years after it happened is when I cried about it. But... The next day, the fucking month later, no tears. I put it in my mind that um, it didn't happen. Don't talk about it. But in realizing, I was already conditioned to do that from when I was little. Don't talk about it. Don't say nothing. Don't, you know.
Don't act like nothing happened. And that's why. Stop it. That's why this. When it comes to my children, I say this. I don't want my children going through nothing. They've already been through enough. I don't want them going through nothing because I don't want them to develop a tolerance for trauma. I don't want them to <clears throat> have the mindset of, oh, again, you know, I don't want them to do that. I don't want things to, to happen to them so bad that when somebody else does something, it's kind of like, you don't even really realize how bad it is because you had something equal happen to you or something worse happen to you. I don't want them to have to go through that. And so when I was watching that uncensored and the, the, to hear the things that she was saying and to and to for somebody to say the things that I that I thought the things that I felt was like oh my goodness. And then you know also this whole stereotype of like the angry black woman that really pisses me off that's a story for another day i feel like <clears throat> i feel like people don't i feel like people don't understand other people's experience and they don't um, fuck But like this, <clears throat> I hate what happened to me because I feel like I would have been a different person. And on the one hand, what happened to me make me cautious about people being around my children because I'm always watching you. The way you um, look at my kids, the, the, the way people touch my kids, Things of that nature, I'm like, you know, looking for it. Because one thing predators do is they study you. And I'm not even talking about sexual predators. I'm talking about any form of predator, whether it's sexual, whether it's um, mentally or physically abusive. They, you know, they study you and they study how to get to you. And I remember having a conversation with my daughter and explaining to her that if she is ever unhappy, um, with someone to tell me and um, she made the comment to me well I didn't want to tell you because you were happy and I want you to be happy and that just was like <laughs> okay because I don't care about being miserable if my children are happy I would take the miser the misery I would take the pain I would take the discomfort if they're happy and so I expressed to her and I stressed to her, you know, and to always know that I will risk anything for them, including my, my safety, including my happiness. I will risk anything for them because I don't want them to go through that type of stuff. I don't, I don't want them to be repeatedly, repeatedly hurt by anyone. I don't want them to not be comfortable in their own home. I don't I don't I don't want that for my children. And I could never want anything or anyone more than my kids and their happiness and their comfort and you know everything like that and it's just the it's, just, it's very important when you're developing to be kept, when your children are developing, you know, to 
really watch and monitor the things that I that things that are happening to them because it 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 molds you and it changes you over time. So when people do something, it's not shocking to me. It's just kind of like I told you so, you know, it's not, it, it still pissed me off and it might still hurt me, but it's not shocking to me at all. Mm -hmm.